what up everyone welcome back to the channel jamal here and in today's video i'm going to show you how to run appium on a flutter app in today's demonstration i'll be using an android emulator and an iphone simulator so let's hop into the video welcome back to the channel it's been a while since i made a video but i had this urge to create a video for anyone that's curious about flutter and appium and how does the automation work for that so in today's video i'm going to be giving you an overview of the demo flutter app that we'll be using today i'm going to build the flutter app file so you can see the apk files and the runner app so the apk is going to be for android the runner app is going to be for the ios once we have those builds i'm going to just give you a quick demo of the test the test application see what that looks like and once we get a feel for the application i'm going to show you the framework that i built using eclipse so you like to use java programming i'm going to show you the apm capabilities as well as the test ng runner. Once that's done, what we're gonna hop into is I'm just gonna show you how we can run the Android emulator and the iOS simulator in parallel. So you're gonna see a few test cases being executed and seeing them run side by side. And then once those tests are finished running, we review the results, we can check the logs. I have some extend reports integrated as well as the standard test ng. So let's hop into it. All right, so now what we're gonna be doing is building the Flutter app. So what I'm gonna do is show you the, the Flutter app that I purchased to use for this demo. So if you go to Code Canyon and you type Watilium or Walitium, Waltilium, not too sure what that word is, but it's a digital mobile wallet app. And it's, let's go into the screenshots. So right here we see the splash screen and the onboarding screen. So we have to forget and change password screen. So that what we're looking at here. So we also have the sign in and sign up screen. So good mobile elements to interact with for this demo. Right now, I'm just gonna show you how we can build that. So I already have this purchased. It's about $9. If you like this um, wallet app or you want something to mess with, please be sure to check them out. I already have it built. So I'm just gonna go to my project. So I have it in Visual Studio Code. This is the wallet app. And here we have the app. So there's two things that we need to do if so we can make this app um, automatable. And one of the things is, is adding the dev dependency. So what we need to add is the Flutter driver SDK for Flutter. So that's very crucial in our Flutter build to make this app automatable. The next thing we need is enable Flutter driver extension. So we do need to have this function added. And where you're gonna add that is in your main Dart file right inside of your void main function okay so once you have that you can save it so right now i'm going to build the flutter apk so i can use this against my android so in order to build that i'm just going to go here in terminal and just going to type flutter build apk and i want it to be in debug mode so i'm just going to add a debug extension and click enter so now we can see this running the Gradle assembly debug task. So I'm just going to wait for that to finish up. All right, now that that's built, this is the location where it's built. So we can check our project directory. So we have build, it's an app, outputs, Flutter APK, and this is the app. So what I'm going to do is just go reveal this in Finder. And I'm just going to copy this and put this in my test location so I have a folder called test apps so I'm just going to replace this one all right and I'm going to do the same thing for the iOS side so to build the iOS app what I need to do is just do flutter build iOS and then you give it the tag simulator All right, and then this is going to build the runner file that's needed to run on our simulator. So let's give it a few minutes and let that run. All right, and this is done and this is the location of it. So it's always in the build iOS simulator. So let's go, I've got the iOS, then I have the iPhone simulator, then we have the runner app right here. So I'm just gonna reveal and find her, here it is. And again, I can just copy this and put this in my test apps area, but I already did it, so I'm not gonna do it right now. So now that we have our builds out of the way, what we can do is I can go to 
launching my emulators and launching my simulators. So I usually do this using the command line. So I like to just gonna copy this command. Now we see we, our Android emulator is launched and we can do the same for our simulator. So if I open up a new terminal, here it is, XCU runner, gonna copy this, paste. So now I can click run and here we go. We have our simulator launch as well. Just give us some time, let it boot. All right, so next I'm gonna give you a demo of the apps. So we just did our two builds, one for Android and one for iOS. So now let's take a look at the, let's say the emulator and see what the app looks like so we can get a feel for the app. So here on the Android, if I scroll, I should have the app. If the app is not installed, you can just simply drag and drop it in there, but I'm not gonna do that for now. It's already installed. And if you look at the app, you see, let's go, let's go. So I have some few nice sliders. We have a sign in and sign up button. So if I click sign in, we can enter some email and some password. There's no logic right now, so I can just click sign in. And this is pretty much what the app looks like. Have some transaction history, some deposit, withdraw, send, and request money features. So if you request money, you can put the pay your name, email, country, and stuff like that. So good, good UI bones, and you have to click continue. We get some type of confirmation details. You click the button to request. It also has a nice success message. So this is pretty much the app. So today we're just gonna run a few test cases, pretty much logging into the app, logging out of the app. So let's see, logging out, you know, we're gonna do foot, get password flow. So we're gonna demonstrate this type of testing in Eclipse. So I'm just gonna hop over to Eclipse so we can take a look at that. Now we're gonna take a look at our Eclipse framework to put this all together. All right, so here we are in our, my Eclipse project. So I have a project called Mobile Appium Project. So in here I have my packages. So this is the name of the app. I have my Appium um, classes. So one is for the capabilities. If you take a look, we can see how we have different ports for the iOS and the Android setup as well as the desired capabilities. So I have the Android stuff. You can also see the automation name here. And the automation name is Flutter, so that looks good. And what is needed to start the Appium server programmatically, so all of that is being configured in the Appium capabilities. And the same thing goes for the iOS. So that's pretty much what that looks like. Also have, let's say, uh, Marge Extend Reports Helper. So what this does is just pretty much going to integrate the iOS and the Android um, test results and put it into one so it's easier to view. That's pretty handy. I'm not using no runners right now. This is for some future enhancements. Um, but right now our test is going to be in this Sandbox Android and Sandbox iOS. All right, so this is what my test driver look like. I have my before suite in there. It's going to run the report setup. And what that's going to do is to start building our extend reports. So have that logged. And here is in my before method, I have you know stuff that will get the Appium driver set up. I, have, I also have my Flutter finder variable set up, so that, that's defined. And the beauty about using the Appium Flutter driver is all of the elements is identical. So for example, if you look at this test in the login app test, we have this Flutter element, sign in button, and what it uses is like the native Flutter selector. So this one is by text, we use sign in, and I can copy this entire class, give it another name, call it, let's say, test driver iOS, and it will be work perfectly fine as well on the iOS side. And that's what I pretty much did. So if you go to the iOS, and I put these uh, side by side, you're going to see they're pretty much identical. Everything is set up. The only thing that's different that we have is the platform Android, platform iOS, as well as certain little tags to know that one is Android and one is iOS. But if you look at the same test, same button, sign in button, 
find by text sign in. So that's really, really super handy. You don't have to use expats and other iOS chain selector. Everything is just seamless right here. So what we're going to be looking at in our demo is a few test scenarios. So one is to log it into the app, create a new account, forget password, as well as the skip intro screen. So we have about four tests in each, a total of eight tests. So now I'm just going to show you how we can kick off those tests. All right, so we'll be using TestNG XML to run our test suites pretty much. So what we have is our thread count of two. So we're going to have two active threads. Next, we have our parallel variable, and this is going to be running the classes. We have the name for our test as well as the name for the suite. And then these are the two classes that we're going to be running. One is the Android test, and the next one is going to be the iOS test. Okay. So we can see it's still running nicely. We have both of them still in action. I just want to move this over a little bit so we can see some stuff here. So right now in Eclipse, I do have this log 4J2. So that's spitting out some of these log steps for me. So what we can see is, you know, user logs into this app successfully. Skip intro screen scenario is now running. User click the sign in button. So all these details can be monitored from the console, which is very, very nice as well. So right now we're just going to leave this script finished and then we're going to take a look at the results. I think that's done. I think we're looking good. So let's open up Eclipse. I'm going to open up the results and what we have is green. That looks good. It is so cool to see Appium running against Flutter. I know people say, you know, why would you want to use Appium against Flutter when you can use, you know, Flutter integration testing. But, you know, I like using Java. I like using the tools that Java has, the extend reports, you know, all that stuff, test and G. So I'm excited that Appium is still available and works with the Flutter. I know there's not much support happening recently, but it's good to see that it's still running against Appium 2.0, which is super, super exciting. So anyways, this is our test and G. We have all our scenarios that ran and execute so we have the android um, side right here so these are the android scenarios that ran and passed and then we have the ios same type of scenarios they ran and passed and that looks good um, i do have the extend reports so what we're going to do is just simply refresh this project to make sure that our test output files are nice and loaded so let's go down into test output let's go to reports and what you can see, we have our Android extend reports and our iOS extend reports. So right now we have them separated if you want it like that. So we go open with system editor. We can see we have our create new account, forget password, log into the app, skip intro. So we have all our steps log right there nicely. And if we go into the graphs, we can see we have four test pass, zero test failed. We have certain durations for the create account took six seconds, login, forget password took about 19 seconds and so forth and so forth. Let's take a look at the iOS and see what that looks like. So open with system editor. Again, we do have our iOS separated against the Android. So same concept, everything is logged. That looks good. Let's take a look at the graphs. We have the graphs. So we have six seconds again, this took about 20 seconds or so one second more, but pretty much still in the same ballpark. And that's how we have our both Android and iOS results. And that looks super, super good. I even added in this framework, I have um, the extend JSON. So what this do is it merge both of those results from the Android and the iOS. So if I open up this file, it should have all of those test cases available in one. So let's see. There we go. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have both of them combined. We have Android, all these on Android, now iOS, 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 and everything looks good. 
we have the results here as well so absolutely amazing so there you have it guys that's how you can run appium against your flutter app if you have any questions or would like to see a full detailed tutorial on this setup please feel free to drop a comment until then thank you for stopping by hope you enjoyed the video peace out